Let's watch Daniel Pratt as he completely misunderstands geometry and physics, and uses that misunderstanding to construct an argument weaker than the glass he uses as evidence. Flat Earthers never do science. Flat Earthers never prove anything. Well, not really, Dan. Flat Earthers do sometimes perform legitimate scientific endeavors. It's just that every time the experiment is done correctly, it debunks Flat Earth. Float glass is made by pouring the molten or liquid glass from a furnace into a chamber that contains a bed of liquid tin. From the chamber, the glass enters an oven called a lair. There it's slowly cooled at a specific rate. The glass emerges from the lair at room temperature as a continuous ribbon. It is flat, fire finished on top, and has smooth parallel surfaces. That proves it is locally flat and level. No, it doesn't, Dan. To understand why, you need to ask a question that Flat Earthers always conveniently forget in these situations. How much curvature should there be? To answer this, let's do some basic math. The average length of the tin baths that the float glass is made in is 50 meters. Assuming that the factories don't account for curvature, we can calculate the height of the bulge in the middle by first dividing that length in half and then converting it into miles. Let's use the Flat Earth's favorite misapplied calculation of 8 inches per mile squared. Our result? The resulting bulge from Earth's curvature is 52 micrometers. That's the width of a strand of human hair spread out over the height of the Arc de Triomphe. That's pretty flat if you ask me. If you are going to claim somehow gravity allows liquid to start displaying curvature upon its surface, you need to provide mechanically measured scientific method-based evidence of such, which to this day there has never, ever been produced. We have done this repeatedly, dear Danny. For example, we've seen buildings get obscured by the horizon by nearly the exact amount predicted by a round Earth. Mr. Sensible has demonstrated sideways curvature of the horizon with Mage 2. So yes, we do have the evidence you've been looking for and claim doesn't exist. You have no excuse. To conclude, Daniel Pratt has shown us that he is a walking, talking paradox of stupidity. He is so dense that you expect there to be a black hole hiding in his skull, but Danny is also so devoid of knowledge that that same space in his head should be just that, empty space. If Danny ever needs brain surgery, the surgeon who operates on him is guaranteed to earn a Nobel Prize in both medicine and physics. Thanks for watching.